two. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. We want to welcome you to our Tuesday nights together. God is doing great things here at Victorious Life. Our pastor has already asked you to be a digital disciple and to share what is going on here at this awesome ministry. But I want to put it in your hearing one more time. Please like, share, comment so that people can know what is going on here at the house of God. God is doing great things and we are excited about it. And we want to partner with you so that the world can see what is going on here at Victorious Life Church. I want to go before the throne of grace sing a quick worship song and then we're going to get this service going amen dear gracious father we love you we bless you and we honor your name god we thank you for being so kind to us and we thank you for making ways out of no ways if there's any sick god we ask that you send your healing god if anyone needs a breakthrough we ask that you do it right now god we repent of our sins turn from our wicked ways and chase earnestly after you we'll love you and bless you and give your name the glory in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Mm -hmm. Here we go, children. Falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love with Jesus.
was the best thing I ever, ever done. It was the best thing I ever, ever done. Last time, Jay. It was the best thing I ever, ever done. Welcome to Victorious Life. These are your weekly announcements brought to you by the VLC Media Team. Join us every Sunday in the month of October for the following worship service events. October 1st, Entrepreneurial. October 8th, Senior Appreciation Day. October 15th, Family Day. October 22nd, Rep Your Favorite Team. And October 29th, Pink, Cancer, and Purple Domestic Violence Awareness and the Hype Youth Fall Festival. Prizes are first place, $600, minimum of 20 guests, second place, $300, third place, $150. Please join us for the 2023 TNT Fall Class Series on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. with Fitness Therapy by Sister Ebony Brown, Grief Class by Assistant Pastor Cynthia Jordan, Men's Bible Study by Assistant Pastor John Vincent, Mental Health Awareness by Sister Karen Reese and Minister Bible Study by the VLC Ministers. Don't miss your chance to volunteer with us at Kansas City's largest and most exciting annual race, event that takes runners on a tour through the coolest neighborhoods and past the beautiful landmarks right in front of the church. Garmin Casey Marathon, Saturday, October 21st, from 7 a.m. to 12 noon. Volunteers will need to set up aid station, fill cups with water and Powerade, and distribute to participants. The race starts at 7 o'clock a.m. and Please plan to be at the campus by 7.30 a.m. Keep in mind, we must be ready for the racers as they arrive somewhere by 8 o'clock. We need as many people as possible to help cheer on the racers in the marathon. Please note, you will not be racing. Please contact the church office today to sign up. Save the date, the Heart of America Council of Churches, October Council, Thursday, October 19th through Saturday, October 21st, with host church, New Jerusalem Apostolic Church, Pastor Dr. Donnie Mitchell. Calling all new members or anyone interested in joining our church, please join us for the series of new members classes starting on Sunday, August 6th at 9 o'clock a.m. in room 212, next door to Christian Education Classroom. For more information, please see instructors Deacon and Sister Enloe or contact the church office. The Men of Valor present the Stand-Up Comedy and Open Mic Poetry Night, Saturday, October 14th. Two tickets are two for $40 or one ticket for $25. Doors open at 5 o'clock p.m. Show starts at 5.30 p.m. Visit VLCKC.com or cash app, dollar sign, VLCKC, or comedy show and your name to purchase your tickets today. all youth. Hype ministry takes place immediately following offering every Sunday in room 219. Teddy bears for $25 are being sold in the Welcome Center after services. Please purchase and donate your bears to kids at the Children Mercy Hospital. It's almost time for our annual fall festival. We are requesting two bags of wrapped candies and volunteers are needed for the event. The Dorothy Sorrell's Food Pantry needs volunteers to help with the pantry. The pantry will be open every Tuesday from 5.30 p.m. to 7 o'clock p.m. and on Sundays by appointment only. For more information, please contact Sister Anjanette Alexander. To all of our visitors here in person or viewing us live stream, we want to thank you for spending time with us today. We pray that you experience the love of God and that something will be said to encourage you and your family to continue living a victorious life through Jesus Christ. Please come and visit us again at any of our services here at Victorious Life Church, where winners are developed. On behalf of our senior pastor, C.D. Collier, and our overseer, Bishop Mark C. Tolbert, we welcome you. These are your weekly announcements. Well, praise the Lord, and good evening to everybody. Yes, uh, we are in room 206. Y'all know the background behind me and the color behind me, but thank God that we're still able to come on live and in living color, and thank God we got some of our members here in room 206, so I want you all to do a huge favor for me. Those that are watching on Facebook Live, hit that like button, hit that share button. Those that are on YouTube, please share that. 
Uh, and of course, those that are on our website, I love you with the love of the Lord. Uh, for truly, this is the day that the Lord has made, and we will always rejoice and be glad in it. And so, uh, of course, we are in our small group classes. Uh, some classes are dealing with grief. Some classes are dealing with mental health awareness. Classes for our men. Uh, we even have uh, uh, therapy, uh, fitness therapy going on in our sanctuary. This is the reason why I'm in this room. I want them to be in our sanctuary. And, of course, you are more than welcome to come and join me here in room 206 for our Bible study. Um, I was up this morning praying and asking God what to bring forth, and I heard him as clear as day. We're in the month of soul winning, and he told me to talk about soul winning. Simple to me, <laughs> but yet I always enjoy when God not only speaks to me, but when he confirms his word. I was in a meeting earlier today with one of our assistant pastors, and she just happened to say the same thing. So I know that I'm in the right vein at this season of our ministry. Of course, as you all know, this is our soul winning visitors month. And um, let's be honest, people don't witness like they used to. Um, we are all busy. We, we got our own lives, our own personal things going on. Our children's children, sometimes uh, their schedule gets in the way. And by the time you get home, you are just tired. You're trying to keep your own sanity uh, from losing it and going off. But I'm telling you right now, this month, God is giving our church an opportunity to win souls for the kingdom of God, as well as your church being a blessing to you. So don't forget, if you invite no less than 20 visitors, and let me say this, you may show this to someone who doesn't even go to this church. I'm talking to you too. If you, who are not even a member of Victorious Life Church, if you invite no less than 20 people, uh, I tell you, you're gonna be blessed with $600. And then the second place prize is 300, third place is 150. Uh, and of course, we're giving out something weekly. But it, it, it's not about the money, that's just an incentive. This is a push for souls. And I believe in the Bible. Matter of fact, let's go to Proverbs chapter 11, verse 30. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 30. We're going to start there. Um, so I'm telling you now, I'm going to just be dealing with soul winning, um, reaching souls for God. And uh, later on this month, we'll probably have some of our other ministers come on to talk to you about winning souls for the kingdom. Uh, but this is a very uh, familiar passage for those that uh, have been in church for quite some time. If you just got started Go to Proverbs, which is the book of wisdom uh, written by Solomon, uh, the son of David. And so in Proverbs chapter 11, verse 30, in the King James Version, it simply says this, The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he that winneth souls is wise. He that winneth souls is wise. Now, the Living Bible simply says this, Godly men are growing a tree that bears life-giving fruit, and all who win souls are wise. I'm going to say it again. Godly men, and it's talking about women, are growing a tree that bears life-giving fruit, and all who win souls are wise. I want to read for you the Amplified Version. That same text, Proverbs chapter 11, verse 30. And it says this in the Amplified Version. The fruit of the uncompromisingly righteous is a tree of life, and he who is wise captures human lives for God as a fisher of men. He gathers and receives them for eternity. 
So as you can see, just that one verse uh, really unpacks a whole lot. We've said that, he that with his soul is wise. But my first question to you is, do you desire to grow a tree for the kingdom of God? That's the first question, because the text starts off in Proverbs 11 and 30, the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. We can just stop right there, because if you have a desire to please the Lord, if you have a desire to live for him, and if you are excited about what God has done for you, your faith is going to grow and your actions behind your faith is going to grow and what you do with your faith is going to be reproduced through something or someone. I'm going to say it again. I don't even have it written down, but I'm going to tell you again. If you are excited, I'm talking about you are happy, you are glad that God has saved you, that God has captured you from the hands of the enemy, that God has redeemed you, that he has restored you, that he has uh, replenished your soul, you, my brothers and my sisters, your faith is going to grow. Your faith is going to cause you to tell somebody about what you are experiencing. Your faith is going to cause you not to stand still. You're going to do something for God, which nine times out of 10 is going to affect something or someone. And so on tonight, I want to talk to you uh, from seven points on methods to be an effective soul winner. Some of you might want to write this down. Uh, if you have a phone uh, where you can take notes, you might want to do that. But I want to give you seven methods to be an effective soul winner. See, what we have to understand is this. Um, <laughs> what they used to do uh, back in the day, tent meetings, nothing is wrong with that. <clears throat> what they used to do, stand on the corner with the bullhorn, nothing is wrong with that. Uh, but can I be honest with you? Where are you watching me from? <clears throat> the comfort of your own home. Where are you watching me from? Your computer. Where, where are you watching me from? On your phone. And, and, and what we have to understand is, he that winneth souls is wise which means you're going to always have that prayer. Lord, help me to help somebody else. And God may give you some things that may cause you to be uncomfortable, but it doesn't mean that you're going to be ineffective. It does not mean you're going to be ineffective. Uh, matter of fact, here's the first point that I want you to write down or take down as notes. Ask God to give you an evangelistic burden for others. I'm going to say it again. If, if, if you are struggling, I'm talking to you right now tonight. If you're saying, Pastor Kanye, I really don't know what it means to win someone for Christ. Uh, I'm an introvert. <laughs> uh, I really, you know, kind of uh, uh, am a little bashful or, or I, I just don't trust people as much. I don't feel comfortable talking to strangers or what have you, all of those things are okay. At the same time, God can still use you. The number one thing I want you to write down is ask God to give you an evangelistic burden for others. Two key words here, evangelistic burden. When something is heavy on you, you have to eventually let it go. You have to eventually release it. You have to eventually get it off of you. Some of you, my brothers and my sisters, when God saved you, uh, he spoke to you. He, he gave you a burden to pray for someone. He gave you a burden to reach out to someone that was very familiar to you. And you couldn't shake it until you obeyed. 
You you know what I'm talking about. You couldn't shake it until you followed what God said. And so when you talk about evangelistic, that means that you have to get out of your comfort zone. You, you have to be able to trust God and leave the circumference of where you are. Because when you ask God to help you see the world as he sees it, then you'll learn that Jesus even came to say that I didn't come into the world to condemn the world, but that through me, the world might be saved. He even looked upon the city and saw that there was no shepherd and had compassion for lost sheep. Matter of fact, there's another parable how Jesus talked about how the shepherd left the 99 sheep and went after the one. There's so many stories and examples in the Bible that gives us the examples of having a burden. And I'm going to say this too. Um, for some of you, you have families and loved ones who have not given themselves over to Christ. They have not given their lives over to Christ. Well, guess what, my brothers and sisters? There's nothing wrong with putting those names in your phone, writing those names down on a piece of paper, and every day just call their names out before the Lord. Tell God how you feel about them. Tell God what needs to happen for them. And then when you see them, continue to minister to them, not make them miserable. I'm going to say that one more time. Continue to minister to them, not make them miserable. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm going to tell you something. Uh, this world is forever changing. And uh, just on uh, today, I saw on the news how the Pope, uh, through the Catholic Church, is uh, de declaring and decreeing blessings upon same-gender uh, relationships. I'm seeing now somewhere in Texas where a transgender uh, person has now made history and been put in a political uh, seat. Uh, I had no intentions on talking about this, but I'm bringing this up to help us as a church understand that there's a certain agenda that's happening in this world, which means the church should have an agenda of its own as well to win souls for Christ. So now when you meet people in these kind of situations, our job is not to go to them and beat them over the head. They already realize what situation that they're in. They realize the lifestyle that they're winning. But when you ask God for an evangelistical burden for others, God will strengthen, lead, and guide your words to plant seeds. Why do I say that? Because when we go to our topic, or when we go to the text, Proverbs chapter 11, verse 30, simply says this, the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. Who wants to be a tree of sorrow? Who, who wants to be tied into a tree of sorrow? Who wants to be tied into a tree of misery? Who wants to be tied into a tree of depression? When they see us, we should be able to walk to them with the spirit of love, no matter what they're going through, no matter what they prefer in life, and our seed of love, I believe by faith, will be planted in them to where God can move and talk to them as long as we conduct ourselves in a godly manner. Y'all understand what I'm saying tonight? So the first point is, ask God to give you an evangelistic burden for others. Point number two, live a consistent Christian life before these people. Live a consistent Christian life before these people. Do me a favor. I want you to go with me to Matthew chapter five, uh, verses 14 through 16. Go to the book of Matthew first book in the gospel, chapter 5, verse 14 through 16. Now we're on point number two, and uh, my prayer is that I will get done 
If I don't get done, we'll continue next Tuesday. But point number two, go to Matthew chapter chapter 5, verse 14 through 16. If you're on Facebook, please do me a favor, put that in the comments so they can see that scripture, all right? Matthew chapter 5, verse 14 through 16. And this is Jesus talking. He is saying this, ye are the light of the world, a city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Verse 15, neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Verse 16, let your light so shine before men and women that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. That's Matthew chapter 5, verse 14 through 16. What we have to understand is this, my brothers and sisters, that once God has saved you, baptized in his name, filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost, which is the comforter, which is a reminder, which is God's spirit dwelling in us, there is no possible way you can hide it. <laughs> it's no possible way. Why? Because what you have, the world does not have. I'm going to say it again. What you have, the salvation that you have, the world does not have. That's why Jesus opened up and said, ye are the light of the world. He didn't say of the room. He didn't say of the office place. He didn't even say of the car. He didn't even say of the kitchen. He said the world, this light that you have, people who don't have it will see it. They will know it. They will feel it. Why? Because the Bible simply says, greater is he, that's what, in me, than what? He that's in the world. Ye are the light of the world. Then he gives a, another example a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hid. You ever been to, uh, whether you're on the West Coast, uh, you ever been outside at night and you were able to see uh, the skyline and you kind of look up in the mountains and you see these homes and you see those lights? Man, let me tell you something. It's probably one of the most beautiful uh, experiences that you will ever see visually. Well, guess what? When you have a room full of believers, <laughs> man, that world, believe it or not, looks at us like it is just beautiful. They may not understand how you're shining the way that you're shining, but believe it or not, they see you just as you see a city that sits on the hill. And do you know what really makes that visual uh, uh, that, 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 that visual satisfaction so great? Do you know what it is? Because it's dark. <laughs> it's dark. It, that's what makes it so beautiful to see a bunch of homes and, 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 and landscape and lights because it's dark. Are y'all catching what I'm saying? It's dark. That darkness causes the light to shine where everyone can see it. You ever been on an airplane at night and you look out the window and you're seeing all of these cities, you're seeing cars moving and stuff? It's dark. Guess what? You shine the brightest in dark situations. Y'all better hear me tonight. You will shine the greatest in dark situations. Why do you think God sometimes allows us to go through some dark seasons in our lives? Why, why, why do you think other people may be sometimes privy of dark seasons in your lives? So they can see how you will shine. So they can see your conduct. So they can see your self-discipline. Because when people see that, 
they say to themselves, I don't know how you did that. How did you, how, how did you not cuss them out? How did you not embarrass them when I feel they embarrassed you? How did you hold your peace? How did you not get even? That is a great segue into introducing God to a person that witnessed you in a dark place. My God, do you hear me tonight? See, when you live a consistent Christian life before people, you don't have to fake anything. You don't have to fake anything. You don't have to be a hypocrite. You don't have to be ashamed. I believe Paul said that we are not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. In other words, this gospel that we have, which simply means good news, why would you want to withhold that good news from people who need it. We're in a soul-winning month here. You and I should be on fire for God to tell people about his goodness. We should tell people about his grace. We should tell people about his mercy. We should tell people about his love. We should tell people about his healing, the miracles, his anointing, the glory that comes in his presence. That should be something inside of you that, 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 that ought to just make you want to shine. Because there's no way, as Jesus said, can you uh, hide a candle and put it on a bushel? You can't even see it, but yet you have to put it on a candlestick and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Everybody should benefit from your light. Woo! -woo. My good friend and brother, Rabbi Elder Kevin Passon is here. He could teach this better than me, but I'm telling you, everybody should benefit benefit from your light. Let's look at Paul and Silas. Thank you, Lord. They were in total darkness. But what have we read? And at midnight, a certain time, Paul and Silas prayed unto God. They prayed the same praise unto God. And the other jealous heard them. But all of a sudden, a shaking happened in that jail cell. And everybody who was a prisoner, their gates went open. <laughs> it was their light in a dark season, in a dark time. And I'm telling you, when God has saved you and filled you with his precious gift of the Holy Ghost, which is power, dunamis power, man, even on your worst day, when you start thinking of the goodness of God, when you start thinking on those things which are lovely, which are wonderful, which are beautiful, which are a good report, when you start thinking of how God blessed you last year when you were in a dark season, and he still made a way out of no way, there is no way that you can suppress the power of God that's already in you. You're going to end up opening up your mouth and saying hallelujah. You're going to end up opening up your mouth and saying, Lord, I thank you. Despite what I'm going through, in spite what I'm going through, I don't feel good in my body, but hallelujah anyhow. So now if you can encourage yourself in the Lord, how much more do you think God can use you in dark places? Just think about it. If you desire to build something for God, that means you are desiring to look for an opportunity. You, Lord have mercy. You can't build nothing for God and you're lazy. You can't build nothing for God and you're fearful. You cannot build anything for God and you are a procrastinator. Even the Bible says that we must work while it's day for the night coming when no man will work. Which means we got work to do. We got souls to reach. We have people to help. And, and can I say this? The tree that God is blessing you to build needs to be unique. This ain't nowhere on my notes, but I'm getting ready to say this to somebody right now. 
Stop looking at other people's tree. Stop looking at what they built and try to compare your tree to their tree. That's not how God made you. I, it, it just hit me because I'm looking at, at my, my big brother, but but I, I had the opportunity and the honor and privilege to preach at the church, Bishop Chavis Church, and my uncle, uh, Subject Bishop Ruben K. Johnson, was there. And I'm not going to lie to you, I was nervous. I was nervous that he was there. I was nervous that Evan Passon was there. I was nervous that Evan William Tom was there because I respect these men highly. And thanks be unto God, he blessed the service. And uh, after service, man, we fellowshiped and greeted each other. And I expressed my nervousness. And my Uncle Reuben had me and Elder Patterson together. He said, everybody take out their thumb. We took out our thumb. He said, every last one of us got a different thumbprint, which means God makes us differently. And I believe a lot of times we in the church can become so discouraged because we're so busy looking at what another man or another woman is building. And we're like, man, God can't use me like that. That's a lie. That is a lie. You may, Lord help me, you may not be able to do it like they're doing it. And can I be honest with you? You're not supposed to do it the way that they do it because God did not make you like he made them. But yet that testimony that you have can be just as powerful as a lesson that one of them can give in Sunday school. I don't, listen, man, I don't study like those guys study. I, I just don't. I, I didn't do it in high school. <laughs> That's right. I, amen. If it wasn't for my musicality and, and, and the gifts that God gave me and all of that kind of stuff, where would I be? You know, I didn't, I didn't graduate uh, too bad, but, but I, I never was a studier. But that which I know God has given me, I give it back to him and I give my all and I am confident in that. I am confident in that. And you ought to be confident, be confident of this very thing that he that hath begun a good work in you shall perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. I dare some of you that are watching us right now on Facebook, just type on there, I am confident in God. Just type that on in there. You all that's here in there, we can all say, I am confident in God. I am confident in God. All right, I see I'm not going to get finished. So I'm going to stop at three, and then next Tuesday we'll do four, five, six, and seven. So number one, we've dealt with ask God to give you an evangelistic burden for others. Number two, live a consistent Christian life before these people. Let's make sure your yay is yay and your nay is nay. Don't say one thing and then do the other. Don't act one way with this group and then act another way with this group. <laughs> you know, you, you, you got to make sure that you are consistent. And if you are struggling, if you're going through, there's nothing wrong with you being human. But yet you got to be honest with yourself. And if you need to repent, in front of the group that you were with because you slipped, do it. Move on. Can I say something? Your group can't forgive you. God does. Now, they should have a moral ethic to where they forgive you, but if they don't, then that's on them. But strive to be consistent in all your dealings with souls. All right, number three, and, and, and this is a, a good one, so I, I know I'm ending on a good one. Number three, Build bridges to others. Build bridges to others. Now, number one, we ask God to give you an evangelistical burden for others. Live a consistent life. Number two, live a consistent Christian life before these people. And number three, build bridges to others. The story of Zacchaeus, who was a chief publican. He was a very rich, scheming man. Bible says... Followed Jesus through the crowd, but he was a short guy. The Bible says he got up in the tree, sycamore tree. And Jesus looked up and said, Zacchaeus, what you doing up there? <laughs> he said, make haste, come down, for today I'm going to your house. All the Pharisees and the Sadducees looked at that and said, how is this man who's proclaiming 
to be the savior of the world, the redeemer of this world, who's supposed to save these people from their sins, why would he be dealing with a sinner? Why would he be going to a sinner's house? Well, I'm going to tell you why. I explained it about five to ten minutes earlier. You shine the greatest in dark places. For Jesus to go to that man's house meant the world to this man named Zacchaeus, and it sent a message to those who were following Jesus. In other words, what we have to understand is that building bridges to others means that you will always leave a lifeline for those that you affect, for those that you come in contact with. You will always leave a lifeline so that in lieu of their circumstances and challenges, they will be able to remember you. You were there with them at their lowest estate. You were there with them when their family members died. You were there with them when they almost got in a fight on their job. And God used you to bring forth peace in the midst of a storm. You were there for them when you sowed that seed and you obeyed, even if it was your enemy. And God told you to do it and you obeyed God and you still gave your enemy or someone who you knew meant you no good. You still blessed them. You became a conduit of God's obedience. And what's, that's, and, and what's happening is it's building bridges to others. In other words, when you affect one person, believe it or not, you affect other people that you don't even know. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. When you affect one person, you will affect other people that you didn't even know. Look at the scenario. Jesus goes to Zacchaeus' house. He affects Zacchaeus and his family, but he also affects those who even said that Jesus had no business being in that house. He helped them to understand, I'm not here for you. <laughs> I'm here to do the will of my Father. Which let me pause and help us to understand that when we're talking about soul winning, you cannot ever be concerned about the opinions of others. You cannot be concerned about the opinions of others. Everyone has a right to have an opinion. But that does not mean that you have to govern your conduct according to their opinion. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Yeah, I, I, I'm going to say it. I was, I was leaving the bus area. Some people were talking and through, through a glass, through the glass, I could see the reflection of the folks talking. And, you know, some people just love to talk just to hear themselves talking. And they weren't talking about anything good. They were complaining. They kind of got quiet as I passed them, but I went on by. Then as I got to the door to unlock the door to get into this building, I saw one of them literally point at me because they felt I was far enough where I couldn't hear them. But they didn't know that I could see them. And I could see that they were talking about me. Now, my flesh wanted to turn around and wanted to say, you know what? If you got anything to say to me, then say it to me. You, you don't have to point me out to nobody <laughs> and, and, and try to talk behind my back. But the God in me told me to keep going. Why? Because my light's going to shine. My light's going to shine. And I believe my my desire to go forward, even though she was talking to a group of people, it still was just as effective because I didn't pay it no attention. And so I'm telling you, when you build bridges, uh, yes, it may be shaky. Uh, yes, you're going to hear the creaks. <laughs> yes, you may see other things that are of a distraction. 
But I'll close with this song that simply says this, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ, the solid rock, I stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. And so I'm striving to win souls. You're striving to win souls. But let's know, my brothers and sisters, that there are methods that we can apply to our soul winning efforts. So once again, I got seven, but I'm going to stop at three because I want you to come and join me again next Tuesday for four through seven. But once again, the first thing is ask God to give you an evangelistic burden for others. Number two, live a consistent Christian life before these people. And number three, build bridges to others. Make sure that those lives that you come in contact with can get back to you when they are ready to give their lives to God. Now, I'm not telling you you ought to give them your cell phone, your email, or or, or, or whatever, you know, you use your discretion on how you want to communicate, but there's nothing wrong with leaving them a card with your church. There's nothing wrong with telling them, hey, go to vlckc.com or whatever church you may be going to. There, there's nothing wrong leaving people information that you're tied into without giving out your private information. I just felt led to say that because I don't want someone to see this and then you become very zealous and you start giving out your information. You know, you don't have to give out your private information. That's your information. But you can give people the gospel. You can give them the information to the church that you attend. You can give them information of maybe some YouTube clips, some scriptures they could read, the whole nine yards, and still build a bridge that will tie them to you. I hope y'all understand and receive this. So this month we're dealing with soul winning. I think we all have to be reminded of the simplicity of soul winning, but yet the effectiveness that soul winning brings. We got to get back on our square church. I'm serious. I, I really did not mean to bring this thing up with, with what I saw on the news today, but I, I am going to bring it up because it's on the news. If the Catholic Church, which nine times out of ten, a lot of churches will govern themselves and yet be affected by the Catholic Church, and then things that are happening uh, within the political realm that are being very historical, church... We got to wake up and win souls for Christ. Never bash the people. Love the people. I'm saying it again. Never bash them. Love them. You don't know what it's like to be in their shoes. You don't know what it's like. The Bible even says, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. And so let's be a church that loves God, loves people, and let's take over the world in Jesus' name. I pray that you enjoyed this tonight. Uh, those that can, please give, uh, support this ministry, and uh, I know the Lord is going to bless it. This Sunday, once again, we are honoring our seniors, and this Sunday we're going to have a musical guest, Brother Tyler Little from, uh, I don't know what season, but Sunday's Best. Uh, he's going to be with us this Sunday, so we're putting out some things on social media. I'm excited about it. But seniors, I want you to come. Tell your grandkids, uh, tell your, your niece, your nephew, tell your family, come to Victorious Life this Sunday. They're going to honor me. We'll be dealing with 65 and up, and we're going to have a high time in the Lord as we are embarking upon our soul-winning Visitors Month. Please get out there and invite somebody. Once again, this Sunday is going to be an amazing time. I'm looking forward to having a great time in the Lord. I love you dearly, and Lord's willing, and he delays his coming. I'll see you Sunday. Take care.